Hello, my name is Lou Vudo, and uh, this is the Lou Vudo podcast show on YouTube. Thank you for joining. This is our first episode of a new show. Uh, some of you guys have listened to the Lou Vudo podcast, which is just an audio show, and that's going to continue. Actually, the audio from these shows will go to that uh, venue as well, but this is going to be more of a video uh, show, so I'm very excited about it, and, and I will be interviewing uh, different people in the entertainment industry, uh, of course, some of the people I've worked with, and hopefully other people maybe I haven't worked with that are uh, very interesting and that you would be interested in. So this first show, I'm very excited about, and I think you'll enjoy it. I'll... Uh, I'll get to the interview, and in the interview, I introduce who we will be um, we will be uh, talking to. So, hope you enjoy the show. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe. There's a subscribe button on the bottom here. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, and also click on the bell because when you click after you subscribe, when you click on the bell. That means you'll be notified anytime something new is put up by me. So that's a strange way of saying it backwards. <laughs> Every time I put something new up, you'll be notified if you click on the bell. So thank you for watching, and uh, we hope you enjoy this episode. It's time for the Lou Voodoo Podcast, you did. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lou Vudo Podcast Show. Uh, we have a special guest today, and I'm very excited about talking with this gentleman. I think a lot of you, if you don't know him uh, closely, you've heard of him, and he has quite a reputation. Uh, and we're going to be talking with Big E, Big Elvis, and uh, better known as uh, Pete Valley. And Pete has been in Las Vegas for several years now. He's been performing uh, an Elvis Presley show for, I have heard, four decades. Is that right? Or is it more well, than that's that? That's when I started. That's yeah. 19, 1980. <laughs> okay, so it's been four decades. Presently, he's in uh, the Harris Piano Bar, but that right now is in abeyance because of the quarantine. Yes, yeah, it's, it's locked down. They actually just went to uh, to opening it with a little bit of food, but I think they're they're still stuck at having twenty or thirty people. So they have like I think just a guitar player or something. But okay, no, there's no, there's no shows in there anymore. Right? But but the venue is there at the piano bar. Is that correct? That's correct. That's okay, correct. and that's uh, normally Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Three shows: two o'clock, three thirty, and five. Is that that's right? correct? That's wow. Right. <laughs> and uh, so Pete has been performing, as I said, for four decades. He's won several awards, uh, but I wrote down a few here. The, the one is from the Las Vegas Review. Uh, he won an award for the best show in Las Vegas. And uh, also, you have your star. on. Is that on Las Vegas Boulevard? Yeah, well, it's actually located right outside of Harris. There's uh, several stars that are mostly toward the Paris, but mine they put outside the piano bar so the fans could come and take photos there. So, right, right. Uh, so, and if you're familiar with like Hollywood, and I'm speaking to our viewers now, where, you know, all the famous uh, movie stars and, and others have 
embedded stars and they're pink stars right embedded into the sidewalk. A similar thing in Las Vegas and Pete has his own star there, which is uh, awesome. And uh, I was out there in Las Vegas and I saw your show, Pete, as you know, in, uh, I can't remember if it was February, I think it was. Right. And uh, it was just an awesome, awesome show. Awesome vocals. Um, you're such, you're such a kind man. And uh, I, I say a sweetheart of a guy. I grew up in New York, uh, Italian, and, and that was one of the ways we express uh, what I kind of felt just sitting in your show. You're just, my opinion, and from what I saw, just a very kind man. And, and what a show. It was a, a great, great show. So well, it was, a, it was a pleasure. It was an honor to have you uh, perform as well, if you remember. You did quite the job yourself. It was, oh, uh, that's right. You asked me to get <laughs> That's right. And you sang it. You did a fabulous job. Oh. The fans really loved it. So uh, feelings the same. Feelings yeah, the same. that was, well, that was a lot of fun. And then you had um, uh, some of the audience that got up and they were playing guitars and kind of mimicking. The air guitar. Like they we had the little Elvis guy, remember, the, the way he got the glasses. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Oh, well, the whole, I mean, I wasn't bored for one second. The whole show was awesome. Uh, of course, I've been a big Elvis fan since I was 10 years old, and I thoroughly oh, loved it. Worse. And, uh, again, just an awesome vocal. I mean, if you haven't seen the show uh, with Pete, he's just got such a, a great range and he can handle all the, those songs that Elvis did such a good job on. And uh, wh what a great time. Me and my friend Mickey were there. And that yes. was so much fun. And, of course, I, I've heard so many great things about you over the years. And it's taken me this long to come out and meet you. And, and what a pleasure that wow. was. It was a flat. Well, you know, and, and, and the same here. I've heard very good things I've had. Your fans come to my show as very, very much and said, "Have you heard of Lou Vudo?" And I said, "Of course, he was a very good friend of Charlie Hodge, and, and they they always spoke very highly of you." Uh, well, I I give them each two dollars if they do that when they go out and about. So, no, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get poor real quick, man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, and so uh, we talked a little bit now before this, but uh, there's a couple of things I didn't ask you, and it may seem silly, but, um, it, but really it's not. But are you an Elvis fan yourself? Oh, no, no. How many course. guys aren't? No, it's true. It's very true. Some guys just do it for, for a living, or they do it for the money, or whatever other reason. Wow. No, I, I loved Elvis like you did. A fan since I was a young boy. Um, I just loved the person that he was. I heard my mother used to tell me stories. We didn't have a whole lot, Lou, growing up. We were very poor. She would tell me what a generous, kind guy he was, uh, of giving. You know, and that, you know, that went far. And I was raised in the Assembly of God, a church like Elvis was. And, of course, you know, we heard his music a lot, his gospel music in the church. And, uh, you know, that kind of... When you look at somebody that famous that had that whole package, and it was such a such a great guy as a person, how can you not love somebody like that? So yeah, I was really enthralled with who he was. Yeah, yeah. Well, now and had I, and I don't know how old you are, but had you ever seen Elvis in concert? Or I'm I'm 55, and no, I never had the chance to see him. I was 12 when he died. Okay. Uh, we were gonna. As a matter of fact, he was supposed to come to the uh, Seattle Center. Uh, November of 1977, and my mother was going to get tickets and die. Ah, oh, right, right. Such a, and that's actually a common story, isn't it? A lot of, yeah, of it is for a long time. Yeah. And so you're originally from Seattle. I was raised in that area. Actually, in Seattle and outside of a little city called Mount Juliet. I think that's where Charlie Daniels was from, uh, Tennessee. We lived there for oh. some years. You know that area, I'm sure. Um. I Mount Julia? I've heard of it. It's in Tennessee? Yeah, it's right outside of Nashville. Okay. Well, of course, yeah, Nashville is, uh, that's about three hour away, but I have heard of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Sweet. awesome. Uh, well, and I, I have to take a moment here and embarrass you, and I had this kind of later in the show, but because you brought up uh, 
this particular topic. I'm going to go ahead and, and embarrass you now. Go um, ahead. <laughs> you, <laughs> you had mentioned how much of a giving person Elvis was, and, and I totally agree, and I know a lot of his fans know that. Um, but I actually heard that um, you anonymous, anonymously covered the funeral expenses of one of the security guards who took care of Elvis at the International Hotel, uh, which is, well, first it was after that, the Hilton, and then now it's Westgate. And, uh, and then when you were asked about it, you very sheepishly said, well, I, I'm just doing what Elvis would have done. And is that a true, I mean, I read that. Is that a true thing that you? That's, that's a true story. Uh, see, that's, and that's, uh, that is something Elvis would do. And I, like I said, I knew, <laughs> I don't want to embarrass you, but that's, that's so awesome because, you know, Elvis certainly took care of people. And like you said, he was such a giving person. That's yeah, awesome. that's what life's about and. I think for everybody, but you know, Elvis really inspired a lot of people to be like that. Right, right. Uh, that just, uh, yeah, that's awesome. When you got started in 1980, you said, right? Right. Okay. So that was actually. Yeah, I started. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I started. Uh, I was 15 when my mother brought me to Las Vegas. Oh, right. And uh, she she said, uh, Sandy Hackett. Uh, Buddy Hackett, I don't know if you remember him. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, Buddy Hackett, right? Sandy Hackett was his son, and he had a he had a uh, talent showcase at the Sahara, at the Casbar Lounge, and I I performed there for the first time when I was 15 years old. But back in those days, it was kind of like the Wayne Newton thing. You got on the stage, and the minute you were done, you're okay, okay, kid, out the back door. That's, that's how it was. <laughs> So they they hired me to, to sing there every week. And it was funny because there was a piano player that had been there through it all. So all Sinatra, Elvis, the whole gang. And anyhow, so he was like really funny. He goes, you know, you remind me of Wayne Newton more than Elvis because of your age. He goes, you come in here, you do your shtick. He goes, and the same thing as we did with Wayne. It's right out the back. <laughs> so I never really got that. I, was, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to hang out, Lou, in the casinos. Because that's where the action was. You're a young kid at 15 years old. You're seeing all this. You're excited. But all I got to do is get out and sing, which I love to do. But then they, okay, well, there you got to go. <laughs> and that was because of the age restriction. Is oh, that yeah. Because okay. I, was, I was under 21, of course. Oh. So since you were 15, and um, now and now you're married, right? You've been married for how long? <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, I met uh, Amanda in 2008. We've been together for, what, 12 years? Okay. Awesome. Got married in 2010. And uh, so what is what are her feelings as far as what you do? Is, is she an Elvis fan also? And Oh, yeah. No, she, she loved Elvis. She came to see the show uh, many years ago, and, uh, you know, that's, that's how we met. And right. basically, she liked the show a lot, and she liked the uh, – we were really good friends for like the first four or five months and, and really got along. And she loved a lot of things about Elvis as we had that in common, you know, so it kind of worked out pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And so I, I also wanted to ask how the, um, your stage name, big Elvis, how that came. And I read a little bit about it, but how that came to be and because that's certainly something that makes you unique and, uh, you know, so just can you tell us what? Uh, sure, what certainly. Well, as you know, Lou, I'm not a I'm not a small fellow. <laughs> so, uh, a friend of mine many many years ago said, "You know, Pete, you're you're not your average Elvis impersonator or ETA or whatever." Right. He said, "You're you're you know you're much larger than the uh, an uh, original Elvis type of fellow." So he said, "Why don't you take your your Achilles heel, heel so to speak?" and use it for your benefit. I said, well, what are you talking about? He goes, well, call yourself Big Elvis. He goes, it's something different. And, you know, some people are going to think it's a shtick, it's a joke, it's whatever. And, you you know, they, they may think you're going to make fun of Elvis or whatever, but it's going to be a name that's going to draw people. It's a kind of a hook. You know, what, what's this Big Elvis, this big guy? Let's go check it out. And it's worked. It, it actually did work. I used the name, and, I, you know, obviously, you know, I don't make any fun of Elvis at all. That's not no. even – 
put my shows anywhere remotely about, but I am a large guy and I do things differently than most, which is fine. And so I used that name and it seemed to stick really well. Yeah. Well, and it, yeah, it was a, to a classy show, which is, you know, that's something that uh, some of us, and I won't say all of us, but some of us are concerned about, you know, doing something that's, that pays tribute to Elvis and that's complimentary. And I have to say that was, you know, top notch as far as that, right. you know, that goes. Well, you as well, you as well. Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, so how about any, um, now I want to get to, because I know you were really good friends with Sonny West, who was uh, Elvis's bodyguard and, and very good friend for a lot of years. And I want to get to that, but um, uh, how about like in general, and, and not just in the Elvis world, but uh, people, well-known people that have come through Las Vegas and have seen your show and that you've had the opportunity to meet. Uh, anybody come to mind offhand? Uh, we, we've, had through the sh we've had through our show uh, many different entertainers, especially at the old uh, the Barbary Coast and Bills. We've had uh, actually Arnold Schwarzenegger come through there. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, Robert De Niro. Uh, Elton John actually had his people there. He used to come uh, dressed up incognito, if you could believe this. Ah. But he actually had his people that put us in one of his foundations one year in a book, and they wondered, it said, can we use your photos? And so and said, of course. So uh, George Wallace has been through there. Uh, and, and by the way, Elton is a big Elvis fan. Loves Elvis. Loves yeah. him to pieces. And uh, he thinks the world of him. So. Yeah, there's been many that have been through there. Uh, there's probably a lot more that I, my mind slips. Yeah, I've yeah. had tons yeah. of the Elvis world come through there as well. Right. Uh, and George Wallace, Thompson. he's the comedian, right? He's the comedian, right? He works at the Westgate, I think. Uh, well, he was working at the Westgate. Okay. The so, yeah. ah. And then how did you have uh, occasion to originally meet Sonny, Sonny West? Well, it was really, uh, I think, uh, as I told you yesterday on the phone, it was a very uh, diff different meeting. It was uh, the, the, a couple of his people and the people from the Elvis fan club in Las Vegas had a meeting with me in, the, in my, my dressing room, and they said, uh, how do you feel about Sonny West? I said, well, I said, I don't know him at all. Yeah, I said, you know, I, he was Elvis's bodyguard. But they said, well, we're, we're asking more about how do you feel about him with his book that he had put out. And I said, well, you know, I'm not judgmental. I'm a Christian, and I, you know, everybody has their own, their own, uh, you know, reason for what they do. Uh, little did I know, they brought him in the bat, the dressing room, standing in front of me. Then they asked me the same question right in front of him. So <laughs> the first time I meet this guy, they, the first thing they asked me, and he stared at me. He go, well, "What do you think about the book, Elvis? What happened? Tell Sonny." And I'm like. I looked at Sonny West, he looks at me, and it was really funny because he has that, and he was an intimidating guy in his day. If you ever look at his photos, that, him and his brother Red, they, they were some intimidating looking guys. And he was still in pretty good prime shape in 2007. I mean, he still looked pretty intimidating. So he, he's standing there with this glare, and I just looked at him, I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm a big guy, he's a big guy, this is going to be interesting. I'm going to have to be honest. I just said, you know, Sonny, I said, look, I, I don't know you very well. I said, but, you know, you did the book. I said, I can understand your reason. I can understand why people, you know, some of the fans were upset. I said, but, you know, I don't know you uh, from Adam, but I don't have, I'm not a judgmental person. But I told him that. And we got to talking for about five minutes. And then he looked over at me and he goes, I really like, because I want you to do the interview. And I said, I, I, I said, Sonny, I, I've never really interviewed a lot of people. He goes, no, I want you to do that. I'm grand opening my book. Uh, and, and I want to do it here, and I want you to do it. You got it. And we got to be really good friends. I mean, within probably just hanging out for a couple of hours, we just got really, really close. That to be really nice. And, and he was actually your best man at your wedding. He was. He was. I mean, he had actually got to be my best man at my wedding, and uh, we got to be really, really good friends. He, he was a really sweet guy. He really, I mean, I just want to interject. Knowing him for uh, uh, the years that I knew him, he really, really loved Elvis. I watched him just break down and cry several times talking about him. And really, you could, you could tell, you know, you could tell. 
Well, I had uh, the opportunity to meet him. Not I wasn't close with him at, at all, but uh, he was at Charlie's funeral. Um, right. And, uh, of course, that was so nice of him to show up for that. But, you know, all those guys, even though they did different things after Elvis had passed, they, there was still a bond there. There know? sure was. There was. And they all loved him. There's no, you know what, I've met like you did. I did. I never got to meet Charlie Hodge. That's the really funny thing. It's ironic, but I but I did get to meet the others like uh, Joe Esposito and all them and Linda Thompson and uh, Sam Thompson, all those different people. But everybody I talked to, like you said, had the same consensus. You could feel and see that they truly loved loved the right. Elvis. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, and I think. Do you kind of feel like? I always felt like right after Elvis passed, especially, uh, but they were all kind of lost, uh, or a lot of them were, you know, first of all, anybody who worked for Elvis, obviously that was an immediate change in lifestyle. So, you oh. know, what they had been doing working for Elvis was like, okay, now what do I do? Uh, you know, that's exactly, you're, you're right on, you're spot on. And that's what they, they've all said it. I mean, we've been with him for, Sonny told me, he goes, look, me and Red were with him for almost 20 years, and the next thing you know, we're out of a job, and we're no longer that part of that life. It's like, what now? You're, you're in your mid-40s. You're in your 40s. Like, what are we going to do? Yeah. Oh, very difficult, I can imagine. Yeah. Well, I know that was a privilege to be friends with him and to spend time with him and to hear, you know, just, again, having been with Charlie, to be able to hear those guys who were there. Uh, sure you know, to be able to hear them talk about Elvis. And, you know, I always said, actually, I always said from the stage, ladies and gentlemen, I'm up here pretending to be someone, but this guy was there, you know. Oh, and, that's true. That's very, no, that's thing. the same way I, yeah, when I had Sonny uh, at my show and stuff, I, it was, you know, it's yeah. intimidating because you're like, okay, you're, you're, you're singing your friend, friend's music and stuff, but you're, you know, obviously you're not that person. But there's a person that was there for that, you know. Right. That, right. And, and oh, yeah. I, I think we both uh, feel in that, you know, there's never going to be another Elvis. And we're, what we're doing is, is paying tribute to him. Or, oh, most certainly. Most certainly. Most certainly. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have any, I guess, plans for the future? Is, uh, do you ever see yourself retiring, for example, or, you know, do you well, <laughs> I kind of laugh, Lou, because, you know, up until last March, I, I didn't see myself retiring. And then all of a sudden I got retired, whether I wanted to or not. And then I went back to work for a month and then he shut us down again. But, um, you know, I've been starting to do these live shows on YouTube, uh, the fans from around the world. It's opened actually a new door for me. Because uh, all the fans that don't get to come to Las Vegas or don't get to see the show now, a couple times a month get to see it online. So it's been a it's a new it's a new door. Um, do I see myself permanently retiring from music unless I lose my voice or my health goes bad? I, I think I'll always do something in the entertainment field as far as maybe live feeds or perform once in a while. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing nine shows a week the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's Oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, I used to do 15. <laughs> I, I got a little, I had to cool it on that. I got <laughs> really burned up. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, maybe one day, you know, here's my really true feeling on it. I pray for God's guidance every day. It's what I do, uh, especially with my career. I take it, you know, seriously because of, you're dealing with people. That's an important thing, what you say and do and how you how you interact with people. So when it's when it's time, I think I'll know it. God will let me know. And then, you know what? I'll sit by the pool with my hound dogs and call it a day. Right. <laughs> well, and that does remind me, um, and I will put your YouTube link on there so people can Thank subscribe uh, subscribe to your channel and also uh, ring, ring the bell or click on the bell so they get um, – let, so when you post something, they know about it. But sure, also, because we do. We, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, well, we do. You know what? Sometimes I, 
uh, I'll do, uh, you know, uh, rehearsals and stuff like that. And, I, and I'm starting to throw them up there because people like that as well. They get to see, you know, just more you being right. yourself doing different things. So they like that too. So, right. I, you know, whatever I do, I put it on there now. So, yeah, so I'll definitely post that down in the uh, lower part of this video. And then um, also you have a web page where people can find out more about you. And also you have merchandise available that they can check Certainly. out. Certainly. Like Certainly. CDs Certainly. and that. What is that? It's uh, BigElvis.org. BigElvis.org. O-R-G. So, and then what... Um, I know you mentioned you played one other place. Uh, how many other places have you played in Las Vegas? Oh, oh boy, let me see. I started at, uh, well, there's many places, but the, the major places, I started a little casino on Boulder Highway called the Roadhouse. That was in the 90s, 97, I think it was, and moved to uh, the Magic Star Casino uh, in 2000. And then I worked for the Sunset Station Casinos, the Station Casinos, for a couple of years. Uh, and then I moved over to the Barbary Coast in 2002, and then it later turned into Bill's Gambling Hall in 2007. And then in 2012, they moved me over to Arizona. Right, right. And I bet you've seen a lot of uh, a lot of things come and go in Las Vegas. Speaking about, oh, it, it's it's you know what? It's uh, a whole different world. Then when I arrived, and then even in the 90s, I mean, it's just a whole different world. Well, and something that comes to mind, Pete, is that um, I remember a day where there was like an Elvis guy on every street corner. Now that doesn't seem to be the case, but you you are still doing what you're doing. You know, I the longest, in the, being really honest and blatant, I'm the longest running Elvis uh, ETA or whatever you call it, wow. ever in Vegas. It's the longest running show. Ah. Well, that's awesome. Anything else you'd like to cover? I think we. Got well, I, I think I think we got a lot of different stuff. Uh, yeah. I thank you for your time, and I uh, really appreciate your uh, your talent. And I, I'm I, I'm glad that you asked me to open this thing off, and I have a really good feeling. And Faith Alou, that this, this little show you're going to do is going to go a long way. Well, I hope so. I know this episode is uh, very, very interesting. And I know you have a lot of fans that will be watching. And I, I think we'll make some new fans maybe for both of us. But uh, I, I, just, I just think it went really great. And uh, thank you for agreeing you. to do this. Of and, course. Uh, thank you. Yeah. And you guys watching um, – We'll put the link again to uh, Pete's YouTube account so you can check him out there and his website. But when things get back to normal or semi-normal, make it on out to Vegas and see him live. Uh, you won't regret it. It's an awesome show. All right. Thanks again, Pete. Thank you, Lou. God bless. God bless. Thank you, my brother. Thank you.